seize it now with the blood of Jesus in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right, guys. So I wanted to update you as you all see. Uh, it took me a little while before I made this post, even though I knew what was happening. And you, you guys could kind of sense something where it was happening. But uh, I didn't want to make a video right away because, you know, uh, the Lord was just showing me things and as I started maturing. And, uh, you know, uh, so as the title says, you know, uh, Thomas Paxson Whitaker charged with a felony. And uh, as you all may or may not know, I uh, recently, like a, a month or two ago, I was just reaching out to all of my enemies, everyone who wished me harm, you know, and uh, I, I contacted them and I tried to make peace with them again. And I was just like, hey, you know, I forgive you and I pray you forgive me too. Like, let's just all work things out for the sake of our families and our children. And I'm constantly doing this, guys. And uh, as you all, some of you may know, because I made a post to support him and his music, I, I invited him here. And, uh, you know, he never told me anything about, you know, he and he came right away. So I invited him here. And, you know, I was just trying to work things out. I just wanted to do right in God's eyes. I didn't, regardless of how I felt towards him or how, whatever anyone's done to hurt me, how much I've been wronged, I put all my feelings aside. And I just wanted to do what was right in God's eyes. I wanted to be in good standing with God. I wanted to have God's favor. And I didn't want to stand in judgment day and have God like ask me like, why didn't you, you know, this and that. So I didn't want to be judged by God. So I wanted to do the right thing. So I invited him here to live with us even, you know, and I, I was offering to help him with his music as you all saw. I made a post for him to, for you guys to support his music and donate him some GoFundMe money so he could pay off his debts. And then I was going to cancel all his back end child support even and uh, make a long story short I'm not going to get into all the details just out of respect for his privacy or whatever because it's between him and God what he did while he was here but I'm just going to give you the facts so that it could protect you uh, because uh, he came here and refused to, uh, fail to tell me that he had already been charged with a felony. I don't know if you guys remember this or not, but a couple months back, I was making prophetic videos. The Lord was telling me to warn these people that you're going to jail. I made many videos of me, you know, remember I was dressing up as a police officer, which was strange because God provided me all those outfits, you know, <laughs> and all the police badges. And then I had all those videos when I was warning everybody, you're going to prison. And I had no idea this was happening with him. So at that time, he went to prison for theft. And, uh, you know, because a thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And he's been doing this for so long. And then uh, he has he was not supposed to even be here out of state because he's currently on parole. So he didn't even tell me until later on after he got here. He All this calamity came upon my household uh, because I was trying to do the right thing. But uh, I'm not going to get into all that. So he... Then he told me because he had to call his parole officer. And I was like, does she know you're here? I mean, you're not even supposed to be here, you know. And he's like, it's okay, you know. Uh, I, she won't know that I'm here. So he wasn't even supposed to leave Georgia because he's currently on parole for theft. He stole like $30,000 for somebody. Like all this ratchet drama. And uh, so if anyone knows his probation officer... You can please update them uh, because I don't I don't do all this. I don't deal with this negative drama in my life. I'm just trying to do what's good in God's eyes and do what's right. And as you all witness to my actions, I invited him back here because I forgave him all his debts. I was willing to work with him and help him be a better man, be a better better father. And he just came here and plundered our whole family, even though we try to help him. But I forgive him anyways. And so... He violated his parole officer probation and left his state and failed to tell me. And I'm like, I'm not housing a fugitive, <laughs> you know. And uh, and then on top of that, I found out from my sister, because God exposes all the plans of the enemy. He was stalking my sister. He was driving to her house, randomly popping up. And she was so upset because she's like, I don't even know you. Why are you at my house? And he was stalking my mom and dad and causing all this calamity behind our backs. And uh, so when the Lord exposed to me all these things, I was like, wow. So, and, and for all you ladies out there, I've also reached out to a few of the ladies out there that he was, uh, you know, uh, dealing with you ladies and, and, you know, enchanting you with his, you know, charms and chants and bewitchment spell. Because 
that's how he gets you. You know, he has this like really southern charm of the surface, but underneath this pure evil ladies. And I pray for all the ladies and people that has dealt with him. And I'm sorry I didn't see this sooner because you were attacking me, but it's not your fault, ladies, because he's just enchanting you and pulling you in. So Heavenly Father, I pray for all of the victims uh, caused by Mr. Whitaker's hands because you notice all the ladies that teamed up with him, a lot of them got calamity fell upon them. A lot of their family members went to prison too because he released these curses upon them. So Heavenly Father, I pray that you break off all these satanic enchantments, bewitchment off of these uh, victims and all the ladies that he's involving himself with, Lord, uh, that's bringing him down, down to a path to hell. And I plead the blood of Jesus over that. I pray you please have mercy on all of my uh, enemies, which I don't consider you my enemies because it's really not your fault. I love you and I'm sorry that I allowed the Satan to come between all of us, you know, and try to have us attack each other for no reason because I don't even know you and you don't know me and it's just wrong. So I want to make that clear right now that I don't want uh, any more attacks. I'm not here to attack you either, but I'm just here to speak the truth. So if any of you uh, ladies or anyone out there, if he just randomly contacts you or pops up at your house, just contact the local authorities immediately because he's not even supposed to leave his uh, house prison out in Georgia where he is currently on parole. He has a parole hearing in September actually or coming up pretty soon. He had one here, uh, but he lied to them and told them that he was still in Georgia but he was not in Georgia. He was here trying to scheme his way. And then he was trying to get me to cancel all his debt, you know, and then take off. But, oh, Lord, the Lord did not let that happen. So the Lord says, uh, you know, people feel, you know, they feel bad for thieves who steal if they're hungry. However, the Lord says once that thief is caught, he has to pay back sevenfold what he stole and that includes even if he has to sell his house to pay back what he stole then he has to do that but uh you know i don't even i'm not worried about that i leave it to god but i praise the lord oh yeah and then one very important thing mr whitaker i found out while he was here through the presence of the holy spirit through very strange behavior because you know you don't really know anyone fully until you live with them and i live with him here in my house for a month and a half and i'm not going to tell you everything that went on but i will tell you that he confessed at the end when the holy spirit came to uh you know because uh, it's kind of like wonder woman when she throws that lasso on you have to tell the truth so he confessed with his own mouth that he's not a Christian, ladies and gentlemen. So not only has he been a false prophet fooling all of us, like it would be different if he uh, was not portraying to be a Christian, then we just know like he's just lost. But this man knew from the beginning that he's not a Christian. He's causing so many of us to stumble and fall. The Lord says, uh, anyone who causes one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble is better than to have a millstone hung around your neck and be cast into the sea than cause one of us to stumble with your lies. So he's not a Christian. And he, he was refusing to get baptized. I thought, this is weird. Why is he watching all the... He's trying to help me watch all these, like, uh, pornographic movies, you know, to defile my eyes. And I was like, Lord, Heavenly Father, uh, please forgive us. Like, why are you watching this? You know, I, I, this is defilement for my eyes and causing us to sin. The wages of sin is death and, and all this other stuff. And, like, weed smoking, like, drinking beer, blasting music to 12 a.m., like, uh-uh, Satan, get behind me, Satan, Lord Jesus, I'm telling the truth, the whole truth, so help me, God, I'm telling the truth in the house of the Lord, in the courts of heaven, all the clouds of witnesses will witness and testify, Jesus Christ himself will testify that I'm telling the truth, but the reason why I didn't judge him, see, I, I wasn't, I didn't say anything to him, because the Lord said, just don't judge him, just let him be, so let him be himself, because usually I'm very, you know, y'all you know how I am. I'm really strong in my opinions and my beliefs. And if I see you not doing right in my house, you know, or by your children, I want to say something. But this time, I didn't say anything because the Lord said, don't say anything to judge him. So let him just keep being who he really is. So I said, okay. Because uh, usually if you're like smoking weed, I'll slap it right out of your hands, right there and there. I'll like slap that beard out of your hand. But this time I was not doing that. I let him just be him, his whole full self. And he was smoking weed all day, drinking beer all day, you know, uh, just not doing anything. But anyways, 
I'm telling the truth. So anyone, I just wanted to come out here to put a nail in the coffin in this case because the case of, in the heavens, uh, this was the court of heaven when this happened and uh, the, the Lord was just finishing it off because he was giving him one more chance to repent in the sight of the Lord. And then while he was here, as you all know, uh, his father, you know, had died recently of cancer. And when he came here, he, ha he had cancer too actually mr whitaker had cancer and he i didn't even know about this but i i had pity on him i prayed for him i fasted for him and he started getting healed okay and i thought wow this is amazing most people would be so joyful and thanking god like thank you lord that you had mercy on me restoring my family giving me a chance to repent and be healed of my cancer so i don't die like my father's before me which by the way when he was here his stepfather like just completely died while he was here because the lord does not take lightly uh people like that trying to um you know it's kind of like the pharaohs trying to uh and, you know keep the israelites in uh, slavery and the lord says let my people go and he said no so he struck down his firstborn with death and so when mr whitaker was here his stepfather got struck with death and he completely plopped over and died just like his father died of cancer and when he came here he had cancer but he started getting healed within like one week he was getting healed right speedily and one night I questioned him, I said, Mr. Whitaker, uh, you know, for the sake of our family, you know, could, will you please go get baptized? You know, because can you see that the Holy Spirit is very strong here? You know, he healed you. He's having mercy on you. He's canceling all your back end child support. You know, you should sh show some love to the Lord your God, surely. He got so angry with me. He's like, I barely got healed. And I was like, wow. This is not from God. You know, this is, you will know a man by his fruits. So I thought, this is strange behavior for someone who claims to be a Christian. So this is where the truth started coming out. And then he started uh, cursing me when I was praying. And he would run out of my house and stay outside all day. Because, you know, the demons in him would not let him stay when I was praying. The fire of God was too strong here. And then he's like, you and your witchcraft book. I'm like, witchcraft book? These are all prayers based on verses in the bible so he basically uh called the holy spirit that was healing him witchcraft just like the pharisees called jesus you know working under demonic powers and he blasphemed the holy spirit and what does god say about people who blaspheme the holy spirit those people will not be forgiven you can blaspheme me god anyone jesus you know and he will forgive you because he doesn't act petty like that. But when you blaspheme the Holy Spirit himself, which is the spirit of God, and you're calling God a witchcraft, you're telling him that these powers are from demonic witchcraft powers. When it's based on Bible verses, you, sir, have sealed your fate into the lake of fire because you blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Uh, more than one time actually and i thought wow this is bizarre behavior so i was so terrified of his actions that it led me to uh, i was in the lion's den for you know the month and a half like daniel so i had to fast i was fasting the whole time he was here i was so terrified and i was like lord please help me you know i initially invited him here to do good to him to you know i thought he was a christian i thought he was really trying to do right by god but it turns out it was all lies the father of lies so i was fasting and praying for for the sake of my children i was so terrified and i lost 20 pounds i lost 20 pounds during that time and i was just so devastated and uh, the lord gave me a fresh fire baptism and when god stepped in he really stepped in but i'll leave the rest uh, all the details between him and god and i'm going to release it back to heavenly father right now and it even took me a while because after he left he put a lot of shame on me to make me feel like it was all my fault you know you know how the abusers they always make you feel like it's all your fault and they play these mind games with you and then you're always like you know scared and then you have to feel like it's all then i you know i was in that state of confusion for a little while after he left because i was unequally yoked with him thinking he was a christian but he was not but then after I fasted for a while after he left uh, the Lord restored me back from the grave raised me back up that's why I was quiet for a long time because I was still uh, you know being raised back from the dead and God was restoring to me my saving health and my strength and the wisdom and uh, you know the courage to speak out because after he left I felt so shamed and you know when the enemies do that to you feel really ashamed and embarrassed and they, they put it all on you and project it on you like it's all your fault this is all your fault and then you find yourself a apologizing for things you didn't do 
you know? And I'm like, wait a minute. And then as God started revealing things to me, I was like, wait a minute. This is not my fault. I tried to do you good. I, I gave you money. I even gave him all kinds of money. And then, you know, he just took it uh, as usual. And then he just came here to try to get his debts canceled and take off and just clear his debt. But God said, uh-uh, uh-uh. But anyways, I gotta go, guys. Uh, I just wanted to update you all on this. Uh, thank you, Heavenly Father, for raining down your righteous judgments. Again, he's currently on parole. He got charged with a felony crime. And he should not, he's not allowed out here. He's not allowed to contact anyone. Don't show up at my family's house. Don't show up sleeping outside their house. Manipulating all these ladies out here online. I pray for all you ladies. I love you with all my heart. I love all you, all of you with all my heart. And I, I'm very sorry that I didn't see that before. The devil caught me in his snare and caught, made us all fight each other. Like we're enemies. Like I'm not your enemy. I love you guys, you know. And I, I we we're under the trap of the devil. So Heavenly Father, I thank you for breaking off this spell right now. We shoot back everything that enemy sends our way. We return it back to the center of thousandfold strength in the mighty name of Jesus. Plunder all the wicked, Lord. Let not them, let them not go unpunished for their crimes. Let them reward, reward them for everybody their deeds in Jesus' mighty name. Justice has been served in the house of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He has compassion on single mothers, you know, uh, women and children. God, our Father is good. He has lots of love and compassion for us, ladies. So don't you worry, ladies. Anyone who out, who's out there feeling alone, you've been in an abusive relationship too, where they manipulate you and, you know, make you feel like it's all your fault. It's not your fault. You're the mom. You work hard to take care of these kids. You ladies know it's not easy taking care of these kids and having these men try to attack you for it. Uh-uh. The Lord will avenge, ladies. God bless you. I love you. Thank you, Jesus, for your righteous judgment. The truth has set me free, and I pray that it will set you free too. God bless you. I love you. Bye.